Hey guys, Chairman here, and I just won a 22-man shop challenge, five rounds of Swiss, top eight. Oh my gosh, I'm so tired. I just got home from dinner. Um, it was such a crazy experience. This was so insane, honestly. Oh my gosh, what a crazy day. And the deck that I took, oh, I have so much to talk about. This is going to be such a long video because I'm tired. I, it's going to be so, oh my goodness, it's just gonna be everywhere I'm gonna be like rambling but it's it's all good because this deck is really cool really excited to talk about this deck because this deck is just insane all right gotta get some backstory okay so Hall Live volume 2 dropped last week so we're currently in the two-week window where Hall Live volume 2 is not legal for shop challenges and regional events obviously regional events don't happen so just shop challenges specifically starting next Friday Hollow Live Volume 2 will be legal for Shop Challenge, which means Gura, which means Gura, and Gura, and Gura, and there's going to be a ton of Gura players. So, during this quick window where Gura is not available, I wanted to really think hard about like what is the best deck to be playing right before Gura comes in. And I labbed a bunch, I had talked to a bunch of people, thanks to uh, Randall especially, gave me a lot of pointers. We, I discussed um, a prototype version of this build with him. Uh, he helped me a lot with some of the, the numbers, but... Um, so I came to the conclusion that there are four decks that I want to target in this current meta. Uh, Alice, obviously, because Alice is still good. Uh, Muron right now is really strong. It just came out. It is legal for all shop challenges. I wanted to target Muron. Uh, Itsuki, I didn't really care about because I know Itsuki is good, but it's always just like a coin flip. Like They don't really care about what you're playing or what they're playing. And he just shows up and just plays a good game. But the deck that beats Itsuki is Ichika. Um, and I played Ichika at the last shop challenge I went to. I got second place. I think Ichika is a really strong deck. I think a lot of people are playing Ichika right now because it has a good matchup into Itsuki. Also has a decent matchup into Alice. So I was trying to prepare for these four decks. Um, obviously, don't care about Itsuki because that matchup is just always like it's just always coin flip. Uh, don't need to worry about it. Uh, what deck could I play that targets Alice, Muron, and Ichika? And I came up with a list, and it's Bane Dream. I was like, Bane Dream actually has such a good shot of beating these matchups specifically. Um, and I was just like, okay, there's, there's the, I just really want to find a deck that targets. And the, the combo that does it is the 1-0 Akko Time Machine combo. All right, so before we even get to the profile, I just really want to talk about the math of this combo. This combo is crazy. Okay, first of all, it's on Tussle. Which is awesome already. I love two soul combos. It's just like super aggressive. Uh, two soul right now, especially against like something like Alice. If Alice just eats a ton of damage early, they, they just explode. Like they just can't do anything about it. So I like the aggressive uh, climax combo at level one. This Akko, this Akko combo is crazy. So Akko with its place from hand or memory onto the stage plus 3k power. So 4k base, 7k on the turn that you play it or the turn that it comes in to play from memory. The climax combo is a time machine. So at the start of your encore phase, whether Akko is alive or reversed, it will send itself to, uh, optionally, uh, send itself to memory, and then it comes back and it gains 3,500 power. That's very normal for time machines. Um, 3,500 is a very, yeah, very normal number for time machines to get. The thing that makes Akko crazy is the fact that it gains the 3k power uh, on the turn that you play and the turn that comes back from time machine. So when it comes back, gains 3k, gains another 35, so it's at 10.5 power. 10.5 is pretty big, right? 10.5 is really big. Um, Notably, it is 500 short from 11, which is where Alice is sitting at. So if we can just get some kind of global power, um, you know, like just any global 500, Akko, when it comes back without uh, any climax, without anything, is already contesting uh, Alice's. We're going to tie Alice, oh, which is really good. That's a really good place to be. However, Muron is 12-5 with both back row. And Muron was the one that I was really thinking, like, can, can we contest 12-5? Because 12-5 is like the hard number to contest, right? Oh man, Bane Dream. Bane Dream can contest 12-5 with the Akko. And that comes with this Misaki package. So the level 0 Misaki is a global 500. So already off to a good start, right? We're playing the global 500 to get Akko to 11 so we can kill Alice's. Um, it has two rest effects. So the first rest effect, if it doesn't have a marker, what you can do is you rest it and you can marker the 2-1 Misaki underneath it uh, from waiting room. And it's a face-up marker like this. Nothing happens when, this, when, when you're in this situation. But when you untap, when you have a marker, you can rest the Misaki, and it will change into its marker temporarily. And at the end of the turn, it will change back into the level 0 Misaki. So on your opponent's turn, you'll have the global 500, but during your turn, you'll be able to change into the 2-1 Misaki. Now the 2-1 Misaki is 
it's so funny. So the second effect only works with choice climaxes, so we don't play for the second effect. That does not matter. The first effect is where the gas is. Okay, so if you're a level 2 or higher, or if there's a marker underneath the card. So at level 1, if you um, change into the Misaki, uh, it has a marker underneath, right? The level 0, so it has the effect. Or if you're level 2, it'll just always have the effect. You get a global uh, 1k per card in your level to all Anniversary or Hello Happy World characters. So at level 2, that's global 2k to all your Anniversary or Hello Happy World characters. Akko's Anniversary, right? So when it comes back, it's uh, 4k, 7k, 10.5, uh, and then global 2k from Misaki, Akko's 12.5. And 12.5 ties Muron. 12.5 ties Muron, there's no way for Muron to get additional power um, unless they do like double Muron front row brainstorm, which uh, I mean, okay, sure, right? Um, but you tie 12.5, which means that if they want to keep the Muron on board, they have to counter, right? That uh, Muron doesn't have hand on core or anything like that, so they have to expend a card from hand, they have to expend stock. Um, and if you have the combo again, you just send it to memory again, it comes back again, you know, all that stuff. 12.5 also contests early play Ishika. Early play Ishika has 10k power, they don't play uh, level support or any kind of global power in that deck usually. Um, they could, there's like a 1-1 level support, but I don't usually see it. Um, and if I attack 12.5 into a 10k base Ishika, even if they counter, they just tie. So they're just losing their Ishikas for sure. Um, and obviously they can have the field encore to like save some, but the fact that we basically force all these decks that normally have a really strong level 2 game to sit on some big walls and get advantage just by like existing. Oh, sorry, I hit the camera. Just by existing, we deny them that ability. And Aku just like, it's just so good. You just steamroll these people um, at level 2. And then the finisher of this deck, you just like, you just hit them, you know, you hit it in uh, to the goal line. So that's the idea with this deck. Um, it's a lot of math, it's a lot of like these numbers, just like really. Uh, hard metagaming for these specific matchups and knowing that these numbers and these specific matchups are just absolutely brutal for these decks to deal with and so yeah I, I thought super hard about this deck and uh, came up with this game plan and guess what it all actually happened today I played against uh, I played against slime twice I played against Ichika twice and then I played against one Alice and on every single matchup, the Akko thing happened. Like, I got the Akko, I got the Misaki back curl, I hit the right numbers. Ichika did not have a board, Alice did not have a board. <laughs> oh my gosh, the Murons were all contested. Oh man, it was crazy. So anyways, so that's that's the reason why I chose Bane Dream, is for the Akko combo. I think Akko combo is really strong right now in specifically contesting those matchups. I mean, I think those matchups are the most problematic matchups um, in the current meta game. All right. <sighs> okay, the math out of the way, let's get to the actual deck profile. <laughs> and so, uh, starting off, we're playing four copies of Yukina Riki. Um, this is the other madness of the deck, is that I'm playing Anniversary, uh, but the Rikis are not Anniversary trait. This Yukina Riki is uh, it's Music Roselia, uh, so it's a miss for a lot of the Anniversary specific cards, which is uh, not a great place to be. Uh, however, so like it's usually a problem for most decks that are running level one advantage combos because the advantage combos they'll either like search or salvage anniversary or stuff like that whatever. Uh, Akko's advantage just comes from time machine, right? So I actually don't care if I have a number of misses in the deck, um, as long as because the Akko gets advantage just, just from like time machining itself, and then my, as long as my end game doesn't require any kind of like like milling certain cards or like ditching specific like traits. Um, it's okay to run this Riki. And this Riki is obviously the best Riki to run in Bane Dream. This will search a level 1 or lower on play um, with the, the Riki effect, which is great for getting the Akko out of the deck. And then also it has the, when um, when damage is cancelled, uh, it can bounce back to your hand. So just free random advantage and it's th this profile is just really strong and I, I always like being able to play this profile if I can. Um, the problem with Bane Dream 5th Annie is that it's kind of hard to fit this profile in, but for the specific Akko deck, it was like actually not a big issue. So for example, like you can't brainstorm it and get this, but like I don't really care. So anyways, this brainstorm, I'm playing the Saya brainstorm for mostly for color. Um, you can play events without color, which is kind of interesting. It doesn't come up in this deck usually because we're just two color and our events are on the right colors as well. Uh, when you play a Climax plus 1k power to any of your characters, that does come up pretty often because you can pump the Akko up another uh, 1k so that you can get out of counter range for certain uh, matchups and stuff like that or hit into a place where they have to counter. Um, it does come up, it's really good. And it's a Salvage uh, salvage Rationer for Anniversary or Popping Party. Uh, that does not come up. We don't run any Popping Party that is not Anniversary. Okay, cool. Uh, so you play three of this Brainstormer and then we play one Toko Brainstorm. Um, mostly not as a Brainstorm, but as for the first effect, which is you can rest her to send her to stock, just a way to generate extra stock. 
Um, in this deck, it's like it really comes up a lot because uh, we're playing the 1-0 event that can easily get this uh, back into hand. Uh, oh my gosh, my finals game was on stream. Uh, I'll see if I can find the link to the stream if the VODs are up or anything. You guys can watch it. Um, I By sequencing my final turn uh, in, the, in the finals, the, like the grand finals of the tournament, it was crazy. I On final turn, I looped this twice to get two stocks so I could like uh, do the full combo. It's crazy. Yeah, this this uh, this brainstorm is nuts. Uh, you like you basically have to have one um, if you want your deck to to be able to do do stuff that it would otherwise just not be able to do. Um, otherwise, search brainstormer. It's just good to have like the the extra brainstorm copy. I think is good. All right, two copies of this level zero Remy. Kind of an interesting choice. I think some people play it, but it's not very common. Uh, the idea with this card is that I needed more red, um, and then I also wanted good going first place. Uh, the deck doesn't really like Riki is not a good going first play. I just wanted a thing that I could play and it, it's like a decent body and also like does stuff. Oh, also I need a mill because um, Akko, the big weakness of the Akko combo is that uh, it's a time machine, but it doesn't have any inherent mill. So like if you time machine, but your deck stays really bad and you just eat a shit ton of damage, then like there's no point really. So I just need to make sure that my level zero game was able to like mill uh, pretty easily. And so having the Rimi be both red and additional mill um, does come up a lot. And then hands when I, I have Rimi and I don't have the Riki, then I'll, I'll just always activate Rimi so I can get the, the clock effect and also just the additional mill. So like Rimi, if you do the whole thing, it's like mill five, which is pretty good. And I played two copies of uh, the double rare lock also for additional mill. Um, I'm not sure. Okay, so the idea was like, I would want to play four Rimi, but then the fact that this costs stock is like kind of awkward. So I wanted like costless mill. And then I also want more zeros. Like I, in testing, uh, one zero Maya was better for mill. But then the fact that I just want more zeros, um, which kind of weird. I, I think I might add the Mayas back, but then I would still probably keep lock at two. I just think the two copies is good. So um, the problem with lock specifically is you have to discard a level zero or lower card. So the cool thing is that it's specific card. So you can discard climaxes and you can discard the Yukino Riki uh, for the lock effect, which is kind of cool. Um, but then, yeah, but having the discard level zero is, is kind of not great. Um, and then it top checks four for um, Anniversary or Raise of Suilin. So it will miss on the Riki. It'll miss on a few other cards and it'll miss on the events. And we run like eight events in this deck. So this has missed on me. It missed today as well. So it's kind of awkward, which is why I don't run more than two copies. Uh, but you do need the mill. Like you really, really need the deck speed. And there's just not very good deck speed in uh, the fifth Anniversary set uh, outside of like these two cards specifically. So. Kind of have to do. You kind of have to uh, play with what you got, you know. Um, specifically, costless deck speed. There is a Tsugumi that's like pay one, stack itself, top check four. Uh, I would run that, but then like it's not costless, so I want to, I want costless deck speed. All right, two copies of the Mashiro clean cut. Uh, I tested it at three, two and three felt pretty much the same, so I just shaved one off um, just so I could get extra slots. Um, it's it's really good because you can rekey for it, and then you, we have a lot of background in this deck. We have brainstorms, and then we have the global 500, the Misaki. Uh, so it's just great to have the clean cut, be able to try field and then uh, move one of my back row back and just get the advantage there. Yeah, clean cut's really good uh, in this deck specifically, yeah. All right, and then obviously two copies of the Misaki level zero, global 500, which really comes up a lot. And then um, the, what do you call it? Then the switch effect to the two one, which just is so good. It's so good in this deck, dude. The fact that the Akko swings so big is like, it's, it's unreal. It's really unreal. Um, and then finally, some utility climax swap. Uh, went with the masking one. You can go with the Akko one. It doesn't really matter. Maybe I should have gone with the Akko one just for like more flavor. Uh, it really doesn't matter. I guess the Akko is blue as well, but you would never want to level a climax swap anyway, so it's like doesn't really matter. And then uh, one copy of the Nanami drop search. This card is is crazy. Okay, so it's drop search, and then it it nukes a trait. So you choose one of your opponent's characters, choose one of the traits on that character, and then that character loses the trait. Uh, Really funny. Uh, I was playing against two soul Muron. So this is like a really interesting spicy Muron build where you don't play Shizu combo at level one. Instead, you just play two, like a generic two souls to like really rush down opponents because like Muron is you, you don't really need that much setup for Muron. And then that deck was like hard playing the the one zero like the clock encore card that can like search for the Muron and then it's like it's like big and has clock encore right. Uh, the requirement for it to have power and claw conquer is all your characters have to be demon continent trait so i play this and i just made their characters not have claw conquer and then also millum runner the level zero double hit runner that's worth a shit ton of, that was worth like at one point in time like shit ton of money um uh, it's like a three five runner like chaser right uh the power condition is also your entire board has to be demon continent trait 
So uh, there was this one game, uh, it was top eight because I had the run back. I lost it and then I played it in top eight. The board was Millen Runner, double Claw Conqueror. I played this and then the Millen Runner was 15 power. So I beat over it with this. And then the three fights didn't have Claw Conqueror. So he lost his entire board. And it was just like, it's like so, it's so good. Like the specific situations where it comes up and like losing trait just like wins you the game. It's like, it's insane. <laughs> How good the losing trade is so uh definitely amazing card uh i would if i had a neg trait effect in a set that i played i would just always play that effect it's just like randomly just wins you the game all right aqua combo obviously play four uh, i level it a lot because you really don't need more than like two honestly because uh, you're not really trying to like loop this so originally i played like pants top in and my thought was like oh, i'll just loop aqua combo return but it turns out uh, the deck doesn't mill enough that you want to be time machine every turn. Uh, but then, like, it turns out you also don't need to because um, you don't need the climax combo for it to get power. It gets power when it comes back from memory. So one turn of time machine is enough for it to be able to contest the level two boards that I was like playing it for. And so I actually never needed the second turn of time machine in most of my games. And so my second turn after that, I was just playing early plays, just you know, just playing normal stuff. Um, so I realized I didn't need pants to try to loop the two soul. And so it freed me up to play a better top end. Um, but I am playing the Bridge of Emotions event uh, just because I need mill, right? The deck uh, struggles with mill a lot. Uh, this is also a counter speed event, which is really good. Um, it does come up like if your opponent attacks uh, in like the wrong order and you know that there's no climaxes or you, you have like a good chance to like mill out using this event, um, you can always do it on your opponent's turn, which is really nice. And then it's, it will always salvage a zero, right? So I think uh, in this deck specifically, it'll always be able to get drop surge, it'll always be able to get climax drop, and it'll always be able to get the toko. And the toko will always be able to get you a stock. So like this can always, this salvaging toko always gets you a stock, which is how you like loop the toko, and it's like really strong. Uh, you can also, because it salvages um, anniversary or Roselli, you can also use it to get the Riki if you need to. So this uh, this is like a bit of like uh, inherent synergy with the different uh, what do you call it? The traits, yeah. So there's like some trait weirdness, but there's also some trait synergy. All right, and then one copy of anti-change bomb. Uh, just just wanted to have one. Never played it. Uh, never came up. But uh, I think you should just always play one. You know, just good to have. Okay. And then obviously the Tuan Misaki. Let's play the Tuan Misaki underneath the level zero Misaki just to show the synergy. Honestly, this card is just so good. I love this card so much. I mean, Misaki is my favorite character too, so it works out. All right, played a uh, memory kick punch and then the Sayo anti-change punch. Um, so again, this one is not anniversary, so you can't salvage it through most memes, but then like the bridge of emotions can salvage it because it's Roselia. Which is, again, which is really funny. Um, just like fun, funny things like this. And then the memory kick, you can always salvage it with anything. I, I wanted to run two counters because I, I do have a bit of early play cards in this deck. Uh, I think in going into the future, I probably would cut the memory kick. It just never came up. And then I like, if you break in this deck, it's like feels really bad because you don't have any kind of like your combo doesn't like help you fix like a bad hand. So like I might just cut this so I don't have as many like bricks uh, early game. All right, early play package, two Toko. Oh, sorry, not Toko. This, sorry, this is Yui. So two Yui and then one uh, Tae. So the reason why I'm running these early plays and stuff like, uh, I think Chisato is like the one that's really popular. Uh, Chisato requires your, four, um, in order to early play, it needs four more other uh, anniversary or popping party. Uh, sorry, not, sorry. Blech. Anniversary or uh, pastel pellets. There you go. Um, uh, this is not anniversary or pastel pellets. So if you're in, ever in a situation where you need to make a full board to try to early play heal and you have to play a Riki, you, you can't early play heal. So I like realizing that it's just like not good to be playing for or other in this deck because we were playing this. Uh, so therefore, uh, my early play healer conditions are two or less climaxes and six or more climaxes. Uh, so that we don't care about board when we play them. Uh, the Toko does have some weird synergy with this deck because uh, you can discard anything, so you can discard this, but you heal a Anniversary or Morphonica character from Clock. So it doesn't heal events, which we run eight. It doesn't heal these cards and, and a few other cards we're running. So like, it's kind of weird. So you just have to be really cognizant of like what you're clocking to make sure you can heal it if, if you want to heal. This is really technical, um, but it's worth it because like early play healing definitely is very important. Um, and it's like, it's really good because you do like one turn of Akko, the Akko's come back, you do the second turn of Akko, and then the third turn, if you're still at level two, uh, you can early play heal and like try to heal down 
and then like uh, wait for the end game. And then the finisher of this deck is is Kasumi. So Kasumi, I think, is just in a really good spot right now. It's one of the best finishers um, because it's like really cheap. It's, it reminds me of Marine, where like because it refunds stock, the entire combo is really cheap. Uh, I really like Kasumi in this deck specifically because it doesn't require hand. The Clamus combo is just pay two stock, so it doesn't really matter what I have in my hand or even how much hand I have, as long as I have the stock. I'm going to be able to do the combo. And then the Akko uh, will always be able to give me stock, right? It's not going to actually give me hand because it's not getting cards into my hand, but it's going away, it's coming back, and it's always going to be swinging for extra attacks. So I'll always have the stock, even if I don't have the hand. And then Kasumi is also able to filter and like dig for more copies of herself and other pieces I need. So my hand doesn't need to be perfectly sculpted uh, when I hit level three. I just need like one to two Kasumis, and usually I can, you know, assemble like a pretty good uh, finishing board. Um, and then the anti-burn is really good right now. I mean, it counters uh, most of the decks out there, right? So uh, counters most of the uh, slime builds, counters Alice. Uh, every Alice finisher burns, yeah. So counters Alice, uh, counters all the Quince builds, they all burn. So it's really good uh, in those matchups and they have to like kind of counter the Kasumi. And then obviously minus three soul additionally with the event. Uh, like this package is just really solid right now. Uh, the reason why I was comfortable playing this this week and I'm not gonna play this anymore once Gura comes out is because like this does nothing against Gura. Gura's just gonna side this for one and still gonna be burning like two on one and then side for one and then like what are you gonna do right so like this is like really bad into Gura uh, but it's like really good right now while Gura is not available. And then the final three cards I mean it's not banned in English right <laughs> but this was banned in JP at one point in time I don't know I don't think it's still banned right but stocks off Fumio. All right, so a little bit more anti-synergy, right? This Ar <laughs> this Arisa is like nothing can get it, right? Uh, it's music bonsai, so it's not popping party trait, so you can't get it from the brainstormer. Um, we can't drop search for it. Uh, the only way we can get it is if we trigger door, or if we draw it. Um, so that's why every time we trigger door in this deck, if like there's nothing else pressing that you need to grab from the waiting room, I just always grab the Arisa and I just hold it for level three. Uh, and obviously, like, if you don't need it, you can always just discard it uh, with the Cosmic Draw Two Dish Two. And of course, if you play enough Kasumis, you'll like draw through enough of your deck that like maybe you'll hit it. Um, it's just like the threat of this is just really good. Uh, stock swap, Fumio, and then two stock swap because uh, level two stock swap is broken. Like I just can't believe that like having access to this at level two is just so insane. You just like blow out so many like deck states where like they're so comfortable. Like they're not. They go from like I can't possibly die to I just lose the game. So yeah, and then just having stocks off Fumio, just like, oh, it's just so good. It's so good. It's so good. Uh, I think this top end, like currently, is probably just the best top end in the game right now uh, because it beats everything and nothing can beat it. And so like until Hollow Life 2 is legal, I would just be playing this. And then the moment Hollow Life 2 is legal for like shop challenges, I'm just never playing like this at least. Um, this is still pretty good though. Yeah. So once again, I just hard metagamed. Like, I think this right now, like, absolutely destroys the current field. Um, and I was just playing for that. And then, oh man, I can't believe it. It worked. It worked. I mean, I lost two rounds. So I lost against, um, I lost against Slime once. Um, I, I, it was a pretty close game, but ultimately, like, I, I just ate too much damage. And then I lost against uh, Itsuki because, like, I just flipped tails on, like, five coin flips. I think I attacked seven times and I just died. I just, like, I, I just like ate just so much damage. I just could not like assemble a board to save my life and I just lost the game. Uh, but then on the in top eight, I played those two players again and I won. So like j just definitely showing that it was like this deck, you know, when it if it bricks, it bricks and like you can't really do anything about that. But like in any normal game, this deck is just really it's just so good. It's so good. Dude, if I had the VOD, I'm trying to see if I can get the VOD for that finals game because my semifinal and my finals games were both streamed. Um, on the Cardart uh, Twitch channel. They were both really good games too. Oh man, I played like really well. And uh, you can just really see like the craziness that this deck can do. Like all the the sequencing and just like, um, just like oh, your opponent just never gets a board and you just always get damage. And it doesn't matter what your hand is because like, the cost me is just stupid. Oh, I, you can tell I'm like really tired. And, um, but I had a lot of fun today. It was such a great day, so much fun. So yeah, this deck is super cool, and unfortunately, it's time in the sun is like, it's like Twilight, right? Like, it's the Twilight Hour deck. This deck is going to be horrible in Hollow Life 2 meta, but in this rare unicorn Twilight Kimi no Nawa moment, it won a shout challenge. 
<laughs> Alright, so that's it for this deck profile. It's a bit of a weird rambly one. I hope you guys still enjoy it. Oh, it's still pretty short. Wow, the time... Okay, still kept it pretty precise. Or concise, I guess. Yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. I'll try to get the deck log out as well. Um, yeah, I mean, I just think... The thing I learned most about playing and preparing for this shop challenge is like... If you want a metagame... And if you just really want to spend a lot of time... Just really thinking hard about a meta... Like a, a, a certain field... And really preparing for it... You can come up with some of the coolest stuff. Like there's so many viable decks and strategies and sets and wise right now. Even in English. That like... You can just come up with that dream deck. Like today I felt so good. Even the games I lost... I was like... If I just get another shot... I know I can win this game because I, I know this matchup is like not a problem at all and like oh, I, I just felt so good playing this deck today because I, I felt like I just had the read on literally everybody in the room it felt amazing all right that's it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you guys next time all right peace